So next I'd like to bring on Johnny Crowder with Coke Notes. And I met Johnny, what some people would say by chance, but uh, I don't believe in chance, I believe in design. So I met Johnny by design and uh, he actually approached me. And and of course, when, when you see Johnny and it's like, like, what is this guy with all the tattoos and interested in, and then I go home that evening and I turn on the, the 10 o'clock news and there's somebody talking about Johnny Crowder and Coke notes and and his uh, speaking engagements. And, and I was totally in shock. So Johnny has a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, product, I guess, solution. And. Uh, I don't know that that he fully sees it, but but I can see two, three dozen applications for what he has put together. And I am so glad to have Johnny here and I'm so glad to have everybody in the audience here. And I will leave that to uh, to Johnny to go on and talk about Coke Notes. Thank you so much for the intro and also thanks to everybody who's joining us. Uh, my name is Johnny Crowder, and if you don't know me, I want to share just a sentence or two about why I work in mental health in the first place. So I I know I don't know if you guys can see me if you have your cameras um, pulled up, but I've completely covered in tattoos. You can tell by looking at me that I have not necessarily had the easiest life, and you would be right. That assumption is pretty spot on. I grew up in Tampa, and I had a lot of social disadvantages. So I grew up in an abusive environment um, with multiple mental health conditions that weren't diagnosed until high school. And um, I've survived multiple suicide attempts. I'm very fortunate to still be alive today. And I wound up going to school for psych because I was really curious about um, what I was learning in treatment and how to make myself healthier. So order of events is grew up with mental illness, experienced trauma, went to treatment, then went to school, then started working in behavioral health. And I earned not only a psych degree, but also a certified recovery peer specialist certification or a CRPS. So now I use my lived experience with uh, depression, anxiety, uh, bipolar disorder, OCD, schizophrenia, all of these things that I've faced uh, to now help people who are in similar boats and even help people who aren't in similar boats avoid experiencing the symptoms that I have. So just wanted everybody to know I am, while I do run a tech company and I am a CEO, I am a person with lived experience with mental illness first. That is what informed my entire uh, product roadmap. Um, that's what made me want to start a project in the first place. So um, I'm excited to share a little bit about the work that we've done so far, and I am all ears at any ideas you have that would help us get this in front of the right people. So I'm going to do a screen share and share with you a very short presentation. There's not a lot of slides. Um, I'm expecting to end a little early and maybe leave some time for Q&A. Um, but just on a very high level, this first page tells you the basics about Cope Notes. We use text messages to improve mental and emotional health. You might have already known this from the email notifications, um, but on a very high level, this is how we explain who we are and what we do. Um, there's obviously lots more technology and science and psychology behind it, and I'm about to get into that. But this is if you needed to explain this to somebody in just a sentence after this call. Hey, I saw this presentation about this company that blank that uses text messages to improve mental and emotional health. Uh, the problem slide. This is always an interesting one because I think it cracks this bubble that we have. We all wish that we lived in a perfect world where when someone experienced a challenge, they reached out to someone. We always tell people that. Uh, if you need help, just reach out. Uh, if you need a hand, call me. In the real world, people don't do that by and large. Most people who are experiencing symptoms don't engage with care. And if they do, they don't stick with care. They churn out really fast. One therapy appointment in, they're out. Three therapy appointments in, they're out. So we really don't live in a world that um, 
is built for the continuum of care that we've constructed. Basically, what we've told people for decades is if you're really in trouble, if you're really in crisis, if you are on the edge, and I have been there, we tell people if you're in that moment, make the decision to reach out to somebody. And if you're not in that moment, if you're not a 10 out of 10 on the severity scale, do your absolute best and then call us when things get really bad. So we have completely neglected so many people. Basically, I call them the in-betweeners. There's the people who grew up with multiple diagnoses like me, who spent years and years in treatment, who took medication, who saw psychiatrists and clinicians and social workers for years. That's like the acute population, which is what people think of when they think about mental health. Then they're on the other side of the spectrum, there's kind of the unicorns, people who have never had a bad day in their life. They're always in a good mood. Uh, their parents are happily married. They make plenty of money. I've never met one of these people, but I'm told that they exist somewhere. And then there's about 98% of people in the middle, and I call them the in-betweeners, the people who aren't perfect every day, the people who aren't actively in a state of crisis every day. And those people we largely neglect. And with Coke Notes, we set out to not only serve the people who are actively struggling, but to serve the people who aren't yet struggling, to serve people with mild and moderate symptoms, people without diagnoses at all. Uh, so the idea is that rather than waiting for people to reach out to us to ask for help, we deliver preventative and interventional support to them, even some of them who are feeling just fine already. And all of you know that wait lists are sky high. Um, there's tons of turnover at the provider level. Clinicians and counselors are quitting left and right. They're dropping like flies. And the fact is they can't keep up with the rising demand of people who are um, interested in seeking support, much less people who aren't even interested in reaching out for support because of cost barriers or stigma, um, schedules that aren't conducive to booking an appointment. So lots of reasons why someone might not reach out, I know from experience. And the idea is why wait for these challenges to arise when we can prevent them in the first place. So just to clarify, this is not like a crisis text line or a 988 type of thing. We do partner with those organizations, but let's say 2% of the world is in crisis. We serve the 98% of people who are not in crisis. Um, and before anybody puts in the chat or asks during Q&A, why can't I find Cope Notes on the App Store? That's because this is not an app. There is nothing to download. You don't need to remember passwords. There are no software updates to keep up with. Your personal data is not shared with Apple or Google like it sometimes is when you download an app off the App Store. This is all SMS based. So all of our support is delivered via text message. And there are a few reasons why we chose SMS as our primary communication method. The first in the bottom left, this surprises a lot of people. They think I made this statistic up. I did not. It is 50 times more likely that you will read an app note or a text message than an app notification. 50 times more likely. So if we are in the business of delivering prevention and intervention, you have to read it for it to make an impact. So we knew that we couldn't build an app and deliver app notifications because the brain largely ignores app notifications. And you might be thinking, well, text messaging is great for my daughter or my son, uh, some of my younger employees, but certainly not me, I'm an adult. Actually, 97% of American adults prefer text messages to any other communication method. Um, and it's true across demographic, from millennials um, all the way to boomers, all the way down to Gen Z. But this last point here, the equity component is really powerful. Tens of millions of Americans, you might not believe this because maybe, maybe not your friends or maybe not your neighbors, but tens of millions of Americans use non-smart cell phones. So for ages, we've said, if you can't engage with a real-time in-person resource, then I hope you have a shiny new iPhone 15 to engage with a digital one. And the fact is a lot of people aren't able to use those resources, not to mention that a lot of people face bias in care settings which means that I might be treated a certain way because I have a bunch of tattoos. You might be treated a certain way because of your age, your gender, the spelling of your name, the color of your skin, your, your previous health records. And because Cope Notes is SMS based, we use an 888 toll-free number, so a government approved 888 number. Um, 
all of our communication is confidential, anonymous. We don't collect health information at all. So we can actually guarantee uniformity of care across demographic because we're not collecting the information that would allow us to give you a varied degree of care in the first place. So summary of this page, no smartphone needed, no internet needed, no data plan needed. Uh, you don't even need a um, texting plan. I was actually with a, a gentleman last night who um, is currently unhoused, is using a government phone, and I signed him up for Coke Notes standing right next to him. And he could receive the messages. And he said, well, careful, because I don't have a plan that will allow me to send and receive text messages that I'm paying for. And I said, don't worry, we use a toll free number. So lots of edge cases like that where using SMS actually comes in handy. And this is probably the page that you thought I would start with. And I understand that you're probably like, OK, well, what the heck do you do? But I think those first two pages are really important to kind of set the stage for why we do the things we do. So. I mentioned before that we use text messages to improve mental and emotional health, but this is what it actually looks like in practice. So each message is just a few sentences long and they're written by peers with lived experience. So I wanna be clear, this is not like a keyword generator or chat GPT coming up with encouraging messages. These are psychology facts, journaling prompts, exercises, this is, health education content based on proven psychology, reviewed by clinicians and written by real live peers with firsthand experience with whatever they're writing about. So if you're getting a text message about a coping strategy for managing stress, it's written by a real person who used that coping strategy to alleviate their own stress. And now they're writing a message to you, educating you on things you can do to help yourself. Now. I mentioned the peer support component because the messages are written by peers. I mentioned the positive psychology component, the, the health education content. The brain training component, in my opinion, is one of the most fascinating parts of what we do. I actually have a whole slide for it that I'll show you next. Um, but one thing that I want to mention here is no two people ever get the same text at the same time. You actually never know when we will text you or what the text will say. Everyone has their own unique text sequence with Coke Notes. And this creates novelty with the brain. We, we literally interrupt automatic negative thought. We interrupt negative thought patterns with catalysts for positive thought. And over time, this actually trains the brain to form new neural pathways associated with coping skills and resilience. It's fascinating. I'll talk a little bit more about it on the next page, but this bottom right piece before I flip, digital journaling. We encourage people to text back in their Coke Notes text thread and speak freely, say whatever they want, whenever they want. And the reason why they feel safe journaling, and keep in mind, they know it's not going to trigger a conversation with a crisis counselor. It's not going to report them or call 911 on them. They know that this is just like a physical journal. It won't judge them. It won't publish anything they say. It won't interrupt them. Um, they know that it is 100% anonymous and confidential. It was their journal, their safe space to build mindfulness and boost their EQ. Um, so right now, a lot of you could sign up for Cope Notes. Maybe all of you did, I don't know. There's no way that I can tell that you did because we don't collect names, we don't collect addresses, any health information. And this anonymity has been a really big factor in our work with the public sector. We serve public school districts. We serve a lot of governments. Um, we are actually ICMAs, uh, International City and County Manager Associations. We are their affinity partner, which means we are their preferred mental health vendor. They only have one and it's us. So we serve lots of governments through there in large part because this is an anonymous resource, a truly anonymous resource. Now, this page, I'm biased because I went to school for this, but I think this is the most interesting part of what we do. Um, if you want to make a note for later or you want to screenshot this uh, page, look up Ecological Momentary Intervention, or EMI, because that's what we do. If you're a psychology nerd like me, um, this th these next 45 seconds will really interest you. So we're actually not just sending messages. We get questions a lot like, how can a text message alter brain chemistry? Is that even possible? And the answer is yes, of course it can. Um, what we're doing is not just sending text messages, we're actually sending ecological momentary interventions or EMIs. And the idea is that you're taking some kind of um, 
some kind of learning that might pop up in like a, a CBT session, a cognitive behavioral therapy session, something like that. But you're chopping it up into bite-sized pieces and delivering those bite-sized pieces throughout lifestyle in non-clinical settings. And what this does is actually interrupt your day at random intervals to force your brain to adapt and form new neural pathways associated with coping skills and resilience and positive thoughts. So at its core, this is a brain training behavior change resource. It's peer driven, of course, it's based on positive psychology, but at the end of the day, this is a brain training behavior change resource. Um, one thing that I absolutely think is fascinating, I, I'm not joking, I literally gave a TED talk about the neuroscience behind Cope Notes. You're welcome to look it up. Um, and I talk about what actually happens in the brain when you think a thought. Whenever you think a thought, one synapse shoots a charge across a cleft to another synapse. And that's basically all that's happening when you're thinking thoughts. And after a while of thinking the same thought over and over again, your synapses grow a little bit closer together each time you think the thought to improve the efficiency of the thoughts. So the charge doesn't have to travel as far. So if you've ever heard somebody say synapses that fire together, wire together, that phrase, I heard it all the time when I was at UCF and my psychology courses. And the idea is that the more often you think a thought, the more likely you are to think it again because the synapses associated with that thought are growing closer together. That's what's physically happening in your brain. So what we're doing is actually delivering interruptions to negative thought patterns that actually pry those synapses further apart. We interrupt that charge and then enforce patterns of other synapses growing closer together, improving the efficiency of healthier thought patterns. So I kind of jokingly say that this is uh, brain surgery without the scalpel because your brain is physically changing as a result of these small, minute, I'm talking 10 or 15 second long interventions. Um, and at the top right, this is a really compelling piece. This is a set it and forget it mental health resource. You are not setting appointments. You are not filling out long questionnaires. You're not sharing health information. You're not spending 45 minutes to 75 minutes talking in real time to a clinician. This is you make one decision to subscribe to receive these text messages, and then we do the rest. We are proactively delivering these interventions. I had a good friend of mine who told me that there was a time in her life when she was so deeply depressed. Uh, she alluded to PTSD, she was in the military, and she said there, there was a time when she was so deeply depressed that if you were to, to give her a Staples easy button, you know, from the commercials, like you press the button, that was easy. If you were to give her an easy button that would magically make all of her symptoms go away and you put it on her nightstand, she said she would be too depressed to roll over and press the button. And I think the continuum of care is asking people to take steps when really we have to make it so that they can passively interact with health education and make that progress even on days when they don't feel like it. Uh, a lot of people don't know this fact that it actually can take up to 254 consecutive days for a new habit to feel natural. And consistency, maintaining that consistency over that length of time is almost impossible. So we are actually guaranteeing the consistent interruptions necessary to form new neural pathways, which is especially valuable for people who are anxious, are stressed, are depressed, and don't feel empowered or hopeful that making a conscious effort to be proactive about their health every day will actually bear fruit. We automate that consistency for them. We have a few different, I'm gonna take a sip of water. I got time. We have a few different subscription options. We have personal subscriptions. Uh, for people like you and me, we can go sign up on the Cope Notes website right now. We have gift and family subscriptions. So if you wanna support a friend or family member, and we do a lot, a lot, a lot of enterprise level projects. So we serve uh, city governments, county governments, public school districts, colleges, um, Lord knows how many nonprofits we've worked with. We work with a, a lot of for-profits, so employers doing employee wellness, student wellness. We work with hospital systems, insurance payers. Like if you, we even got an email from an ultimate Frisbee team and we were like, sure, let's do a project for the Frisbee team. So if you're working with some community that we can support, please let me know. There's lots of different use cases for this. But one thing I want to point out here is um, this is a really compelling value 
for the price. So when I was growing up, my parents didn't make a whole mess of money. I'm kind of understating that. We were a low income family and treatment was just so far out of our price range. We, we, it was really difficult to be able to justify even one therapy session. Cause you know, you have to go back in a week, you have to go back the week after that, it would really add up. And I wanted to make Coke notes affordable at scale. So Coke notes, this is maybe my, my favorite part. We are about 40 times cheaper than other popular mental health resources, 40 times cheaper. So you're talking a full year of daily mental health support through Cope Notes for less than the price of a single therapy session. That is absolutely ridiculous, but it is our value prop. And you might think, well, Cope Notes isn't therapy. Uh, and I'm glad you brought that up. No, we're not. But actually, people see results faster with Cope Notes than they do with therapy. Therapy takes on average 10 weeks to drive statistically significant positive health outcomes. And with Cope Notes, 86% of users report improved mental health within 30 days. We've sent millions of text messages, millions, to tens of thousands of people all over the world. And we have hundreds of enterprise level contracts. We work with the National Alliance on Mental Illness, uh, State of New York. Um, if any of you are local, we have multiple contracts with USF Health, who's actually done a qualitative and a quantitative research study uh, published in medical journals. Uh, our evidence base showing that these results are actually proven. Uh, we work with the Crisis Center in Tampa Bay. I'm going to actually skip the testimonials in the interest of time just so we can do Q&A, but there are plenty on our website. If you go to copenotes.com, you can read about them. Uh, but there are two things that I want to touch on quickly. Um, on the left, under our impact, if you see decreased depression, anxiety, and stress, this is actually a result here. I want to show you guys something actually, because I'm already screen sharing. Copenotes.com slash research. You can pull this up on your own computer if you prefer. Um, we have two research studies published in medical journals. One is published in the Journal of Medical Internet Research. This one that I'm sharing with you is published in the Journal of Mental Health. And I just want to share this really interesting uh, dynamic with you because most resources are designed specifically for the people who are actively struggling now, people who are going to reach out for help. And we actually measured two different groups. We measured those people, the first group, people in the moderate to severe symptom range, uh, people in need of daily support, people scoring pretty high on the PHQ-9, so experiencing depression, anxiety, and stress. And we also measured outcomes for people who are trying to stay healthy. These are people often with no diagnoses whatsoever, people in the mild to moderate symptom range, people scoring very low on the PHQ-9, just looking for additional motivation, prevention, support to improve their coping skills. And this is really interesting, guys. You might hope to see this from any mental health resource. You might hope, well, yeah, if you're running a mental health company, I pray to God that you're seeing decreases in depression, anxiety, and stress. Like that should be expected. You might even say, well, it's kind of a nice to have that it's increasing their emotional intelligence. That's pretty cool. What you might not expect is positive health outcomes measured for people who are currently undiagnosed and not actively struggling now. This is one of the most exciting parts of what we do, that you can take one resource and share it with a large, undifferentiated group of people. I'm talking, you have 100,000 students in your school district. You have 1.3 million residents in your county. You can share one resource with this entire group and anticipate positive health outcomes regardless if someone is actively struggling right now. So what was really interesting was um, not only did Cope Notes, this is some of the, the findings from USF, it, it's addressing adverse childhood experiences, very available 24-7, 365. It's actually circumventing stigma by being anonymous and not collecting PHI. It normalizes help-seeking behaviors and reduces self-stigma, which is huge. Um, and it's preventative and interventional. So rather than waiting for things to get really bad, this is something that communities can roll out today. And I'm telling you, signing up takes eight seconds. You literally go to a, a landing page and type in your phone number and press submit. That's the entire sign-up process. So that's what I wanted to end on was just sharing that, yes, we decrease depression, anxiety, and stress symptoms for people living with those symptoms. And that's really important. But also, we're doing a lot in the way of prevention. We're serving people who are fine now, but might not be fine in six months, 
in 24 months. We're giving them the support they need now. And what I always tell people, how I'm happy to end this is, we, um, we, we often use the analogy of a toothbrush. So out in the world, there are dentists. I don't wanna be a dentist. That's for people who are going in every once in a while, who need a real professional to be with them in real time. But what do you do for the rest of the 179 days between dentist visits? Or in my case, sometimes longer because I travel and sometimes it's a month in between. We, um, we provide the toothbrush and floss. We are that small, simple, affordable thing that someone can spend just a little bit of time doing every day to keep their brain healthy. If brushing your teeth is preventative dental health, Cope Notes is preventative mental health. And I am extremely passionate about getting this in front of the right people. We are over six years in revenue, so we're in our seventh year of operation. Um, and the goal is just to serve as many people as possible. I am really interested in hearing from any of you um, about potential applications for this that either we have already talked about, like if you work with a government or you work with a school district or you work with a for-profit or non-profit healthcare, someone that I mentioned, or if you have a really off the wall idea that I didn't bring up, I would love to hear it. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna put uh, my contact info in the chat, my personal contact info, and then I would love to hear questions from anybody who's curious or ideas from anybody who's been brainstorming. All right, thank you, Johnny. So I'm gonna start this off. Um, there was in the chat, Amanda Lukov had to leave, but she said she's gonna connect with you on LinkedIn about collaborating. Um, I also wanna put out there that, that, you know, the applications that I see for this, having served in the military and, and spent time away from my family on a ship overseas and, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, everybody does it. It is a drain on, on the person that's that's gone. It is a drain on the person that is left at home that has to take care of all the bills, all the kids, all the maintenance, all of that stuff while that person is gone. And these are the applications that I see. And I've been encouraging Johnny to uh, to look at, at getting onto a GSA schedule and so that agencies within the federal government can purchase licenses and make them available to people within their commands, within their organizations. Uh, I find this to be a huge, huge benefit also for organizations that work with people that have challenges with PTSD. And, you know, so there, there's, there's a lot of that out there. I, I think that this could be a, a good tool for that. And then again, for the family members that, that have to deal with this, that don't get the support. So I'll get off of my soapbox and, and open it up for anyone else that has questions comments i'm going to call on a couple of you jesse esther hi yeah this, is that alan this is jesse yeah oh go ahead yeah. jesse go I'll let jesse go, go first jesse. yes so um your services do you offer anything specific towards neurodivergent people who are just trying to get their i don't know lack of word to describe it like their thought process together or anything like that that's what i struggle with is kind of just trying to understand my world as a neurodivergent person and just kind of make sense of everything. Does your app help with that at all or anything that you could do to address that just so I can better understand what you offer here? Yeah, the content is really 